Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to back up a local Synology NAS to a remote Synology NAS. Now the majority of this setup is actually done outside of this specific tutorial. And this is kind of a follow up to my video yesterday, which shows you how to create an OpenVPN network interface. And we're basically just going to build on top of that. So there's a few things that you kind of have to have in place before you attempt this. The first is that we will be connecting to a remote Synology NAS that is already connected to our home network using our OpenVPN server. So everything's already kind of configured from a network perspective. We're just connecting to it through Hyper Backup. The second thing is that while we're connecting to it through Hyper Backup, what I'm actually doing in this tutorial is I'm connecting to a static IP address that I configured for OpenVPN server on my Synology NAS. And I have it set up this way so that I automatically connect to the same IP address every single time. And I know that my OpenVPN server on my NAS won't try and hand that IP address out to any other VPN users. I have a different video for everything that I just described, and I'll leave links to those in the description. I also want to highlight before we get started that I have written instructions for this entire process in the description. So there are two different NASs that we have to actually configure in this process. We have our local NAS and we have our remote NAS. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect to that remote NAS and we're going to install Hyper Backup Vault from the Package Center. Now in order to connect to our remote NAS from our local network, you have to have a static route in place in your router. If you aren't sure how to do that, check out the written instructions because I have a link on how you could do that there. After it's done installing, you have to ensure that in your Synology firewall, you have an allow rule for port 6281. That's the port that Hyper Backup uses. After you do that, everything on the remote NAS is now set up properly, and we're going to shift our focus back to the local NAS. So if on your local NAS you don't have Hyper Backup installed, go to the Package Center and install that. Now when you launch it, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new task and it's going to be connecting to a remote NAS device. And as soon as you do that, we're going to move on to the next section where you have to create the backup destination settings. So this is why I said earlier on that I set a static OpenVPN IP address for my remote users, because at this point, I just put in the IP address for the VPN user that I'm connecting with, and that IP address should never change. So these settings will be correct indefinitely. After that, we're going to turn transfer encryption on. You're going to have to trust the certificate at that time. And then we're going to authenticate in with the remote NAS user that you want to use. After that, pick the shared folder that you want to back up to, select a file name by changing the directory settings, and then proceed to the next steps. Now you'll have to configure your folders and the applications that you actually want to back up. At this time, you'll be able to configure your backup settings. So you can run it based on the backup schedule that you want. If you don't want to run it automatically, you can uncheck everything and kind of go from there. But the one thing that I want to point out here is the client side encryption. So since you're backing these files up off site, it's a good idea to enable client side encryption. And this pretty much just protects that specific backup file. So if it ever gets into the wrong hands, they won't be able to restore your data without that password. Now, the one thing that you have to note is when you add a password to that client side encryption section and you proceed, it's going to actually export an encryption key. Now, if you ever lose your password and you lose this encryption key, you need one or the other. If you ever lose both of them, this backup will be dead forever. You won't be able to actually ever restore from it. So ensure that you keep that password and the encryption key safe so that if you ever do need to restore this data, you'll be able to use that to restore it. The next section will walk through backup rotations. This is kind of personal preference. The smart recycle option is actually pretty cool, but I still normally use the earliest version because I just want the earliest version that I created to be deleted. And then after that, you can apply it and the job will start. Now this is backing up your on-site NAS to your off-site NAS. After it's done, you should be able to connect to it and actually navigate through those files, restore the entire folder if you have to, but everything will be one encrypted, which isn't technically required since we are using a VPN tunnel to actually back up these files. But regardless, it's a good idea to just set it because why not? Um, but everything's encrypted the entire way. The backup will be encrypted. You'll be able to restore those files and everything will be safe offsite. So that wraps up the tutorial for today. It's a pretty basic process. This is actually the easier setup. 
The more difficult setup kind of revolves around OpenVPN, but even that's not too bad if you follow the guide. But that wraps up the tutorial for today. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I do my best to respond to you as soon as I can. If this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks, guys.